it is finally time. We are going to make some juice today. I'm very excited. Uh, this has kind of been procrastinated on for the last week. I believe it's about a week ago that I picked that wheelbarrow full of apples. I'll uh, take you over there and show you how we're doing with that. But uh, anyways, we're going to see what we can get made tonight. There are more apples that need to be picked. So fingers crossed we can get this done. Uh, it'd be nice to have my wheelbarrow back because we use that for hauling water to the back for the animals. So, so far we've been carrying it by hand all this week and it hasn't been super fun. So as I showed in an earlier video, there's our pile of apples in there. We've got two five gallon buckets down here, ripening amazingly. So uh, I might siphon some of these out to make some more apple pie fill, but that's okay. And we also have our bucket over there. So the process to start out is washing, weighing, and cutting in half these apples to go through the wood chipper. So we've got our big half uh, 50 gallon blue barrel cut in half here. So we're going to just weigh and drop the apples in here to be washed and then we'll get cutting. So I'm set up to start my cutting on the first round. We've got our apples in and washed. We had just over, just about 69 pounds in there. So I'm curious to see what we get out of that, but that's our first batch. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of very obvious that there was two different trees that got picked here. One was more of a yellowy tree and one is, uh, um, you know, green turning a bit red. Now the green turning a bit red are a bit tartar and the yellow ones are quite ripe, but I think I am gonna try and keep them separate. So I've got a bucket there with water and a bucket there with water. I'm a little slop bucket in the middle for the pigs in case there's any apples that just don't make the cut. In this basket, there are some more apples that belong to the, all these ones that went really red are the same as those green apples in there. It's just they were exposed to the sun. So if I need a few more, I might nab out of here, but this was going to be for my pie film. And then those two buckets are also from different trees. So I'd like to keep them separate. It's nice to mark things and know which trees produced which because it's like last year, uh, Alex named uh, our one apple trees, the Tiny Jim apples, and they made the most incredible apple juice. And it's loaded again this year. So we're going to pick that after, but we already know we want all those on their own and they are great, great juice. But this is kind of trial and error as we get going, but juice is something, juice and cider, there's something that we really want to be able to produce on the farm, both uh, alcoholic cider and non-alcoholic. So um, we're going to uh, keep testing these trees as we go and pruning what we can and hopefully eventually have an amazing orchard. But I'm gonna get busy on my cutting and I'll bring you back when it's time to make some juice. So end of real work day is over. So now Chris is here to uh, help with getting this all finished. So we've got the press out and the wood chipper out and we're gonna get busy. Mm -hmm. There's our wood chipper all cleaned up, buckets ready. And there's our press and we've got our bucket handy. Now, if anybody gets the chance to find, purchase one of these things, this is a great, great thing for doing apple product, apple juice. Uh, it actually is just a fruit press. I think it probably was for grapes, but it works great for this. And so far the wood chipper has worked fantastic last year. So let's see what it'll do this year. Chopping them up really helps with getting the juices out. So there are our chipped up apples. You can see they're First really round. nice. First round, yeah, this is only a, a fraction of what we've got. They're going down into the press. Two five gallon buckets full of apples because that's about what it takes all chipped up to fill this press. So we'll see how we do. You happy to be making juice, Chris? Mm-hmm. It'll be good to uh, get some made because we've pretty much gone through all of it, I think. Yep, we've used it all. And uh, a little tip down the ground is when you're filling it, make don't sure Don't forget, because you can see it's already dripping out that juice. It'll slowly do it. So don't forget to put your bucket under this. Is this spigot? Spout? I think so. This isn't the exciting part. Wait till we put the weights on. Are you ready for it, Chris? I think so. We got it uh, pretty full. We're debating whether we could put more in. We probably could. But at the same we time, could put more in, but we still have more to chop up. And then you'll only have a little bit for next time, which will make it meh. So, so he's putting on the main first presses, which the blocks. the blocks keep all the apples in. You can hear it already. Look, beautiful apple juice already. We do filter this one more time when we get it into the house. 
But you can drink this straight from the uh, press here. And it's very, very rich and concentrated. What you get in the store does not taste like this stuff. Does it? No, this stuff is uh, quite concentrated. So, so the basics of the press come alternate back and forth. Yep, comes with blocks. You just go back and forth. And make sure you got the same uh, width ones at the same spot. Gives you leverage. If you go fairly high, it gives you leverage to really press it down. I anticipate we're probably going to fill that half full. Some of these apples were very juicy apples from the one tree, and then some were not so juicy because they were not as ripe. But there you see, he's got it full on to the top. He's put on that... Uh, I don't know what it's actually called. Hang on here. But you basically, it's your double-sided... Ratchet sort of thing. Thingy so that it will hold it. It's got to get the right way. So if I go the other way, it'll... Unratchet it. We don't want that. Not yet, anyways. It does come out quite a dark color. It just depends what apples you use, and it depends how quickly you get it through the chipper and done. We actually had to make a quick modification on the wood chipper to get this to work a little bit better, so I'm sure our next batch is going to be a lot lighter because it'll go quicker. When it's cooler, the apples don't... Uh brown is quicker either. Yeah. But well, and a lot of these apples I cut this afternoon, so they had really browned up. You can see that. Look at the juice coming. And it's not even getting hard to spin it yet. No. Maybe we'll get more than half. That pot there is about 13 liters when you fill it right up. So I anticipate we're going to get at least 7 liters, maybe a bit more. We're going to catch some and do a taste test. Taste test, number one. It smells like apple juice. It looks like apple juice. Really strong apple juice. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. We need to figure out how to make cider. Because this would make really good cider. Wait till you try it. It's not too sweet. I think that's the thing. Last year we had... Sorry, I'm looking at you instead of the camera. It's not too sweet. Last year we had some of the apples that were so sweet, it was almost, I don't know, it, it was too sweet to be apple juice. But uh, this is this is really, really nice. This is gonna make some really good juice and maybe I'll figure out how to make cider. Chris is up. Let's see what this tastes like. You're gonna find that it tastes like cider. Like hard cider, it would make nice hard cider. Well, it's not tart at all. Yeah. It's very, uh... It's one thing we find when you actually go to drink it, like drinking a little bit like this is one thing, but when you actually go to drink it in the house throughout the year, it, you usually end up cutting it with some water. Because yeah, you have to dilute bad. it a bit because it's quite concentrated. But it's, it's nice because it's concentrated. You can store more of it and yeah. it goes a little further yeah. than the water. So just for reference for anybody who is thinking they're going to try this at home, this is uh, put into the freezer. Uh, you can jar this. You can heat it on the uh, oven and make it into a hot cider like um, that, that you can can. Uh, but it does change the taste. The taste is never mm. the same after they've been cooked. Um, so this we do freeze in concentrated bottles in the freezer uh, to use throughout the year. We might try the other method depending on how well, much Well, if we, we get enough, we definitely want to do some as the other cider because we like hot cider as well. Mm -hmm. But eventually the plan is to make some hard cider. Because realistically, what homestead is complete without being able to make your own alcohol? That's true. So that's what we got from the first pressing. Uh, probably about 10 liters, I would say. We will, like I say, be filtering this and bottling it inside. So we'll have a better idea for it at the end of the video once we're done. All of it. But... I'm going to put a lid on that. Yes. <laughs> lid, very important. Even though it is cool and in the evening out here. But Chris is going to take this apart so we can show you just what's left of... They're All the simple. apples. You just need these metal doohickeys. hooks. Doohickeys, yes, the technical term. Our sheep really want in. And then when he takes it out, it's really pressed in there. There you have 
It's called an apple cake. And the animals love this. Excellent fodder food for the pigs, chickens, anything really. But we're gonna keep going here because we got one more bunch to press. So we've combined all of our juice into my big, big pot. So there you have it. I'm guessing that this is probably going to be about 18 liters, but we've got all of our uh, storage freezer bottles that we've been saving ready to go. And Chris is going to work his magic on our uh, fancy filtering and funneling system. And we'll get these filled up and we'll bring you back once we know what we've uh, got going on. While Chris has it all into its jugs, we ended up with uh, 14 liters. So not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit strong. This definitely would need to be diluted. So now that Chris has uh, finished uh, bottling that up and we are, you know, we've done the taste test, we've diluted it, we've tried it that way. We're definitely gonna mark these trees. We've got a few uh, trees that we know from last year were great for the apples. And uh, these ones, okay, but not fantastic, but they still make juice and it's definitely drinkable. It's a little bit tart, it would be my thing. Um, but that's the thing with uh, using your own kind of wild apples. You're going around and trying things and it's taste test and year after year you get better and better at it and you figure out what works and what doesn't. So. So far this year, we're kind of uh, half and half because we know we love the tiny gym tree from last year for the apple juice and uh, it's it doesn't have as much as it did last year. So we were definitely trying to find some others. Uh, like I said, this was two trees combined to make this juice and it's nice. It's just a little stronger. Um, so we've got another tree out there that we want to try and some other apples. So we're going to keep going, but we thought we'd take you through this process and just kind of show you how we make our apple juice here on the homestead.